All right, let's take a pump selection. This is a submersible pump. This is what most folks use or will end up using if they have groundwater. And uh, bottom line is the pump, the electric, everything's in there. And uh, you just lower it into the casing to the water level. Usually it's a little bit below the water, static water table. So if you do over pump it, it's not going to be sucking air. You put it at the bottom or trust your pump guy, your well guy to know where to put that. Um, it also has to breathe. It also has to circulate water through it to cool it. Okay, if you run out of water and you start running it without water, you can overheat the pump, just like any electric motor, and you can burn it up. So don't over pump, okay? Centrifugal pumps. These are designed to be put on, on surface, land surface, and you put a suction line into the uh, either down the well or into a pond or surface water of some type. This is an electrical pump. Obviously, you've got to have a source of uh, electricity, but uh, very efficient, but limited because of source of water, uh, electricity. I do know some people that will uh, go ahead and use this if they have a generator, you know, for uh, small projects. Obviously, it can get into some serious money. Uh, you're better off having a uh, source of electricity online versus trying to use gasoline to generate your electricity, but this is an option for you. Um, one thing about this pump, it runs at a, at a certain RPM. When it's on, it's on. It does, you cannot, I expect you could put a rheostat on it, but if you don't know what you're doing, you could burn it up. Don't do that. You know, you need to check with the well guy, but it runs one RPM. It's designed to, you, you know, pump so much water at so much pressure, okay? The nice thing about an engine uh, mounted uh, to a pump is that you can throttle it up or down. You can increase your volume and your pressure. I really like that for, you know, for the guy who's just trying to get by on a, on a shoestring. And I've used these types of uh, pumps and, you know, they're pretty flexible, but you have to know how to use them. Of course, the downside is gasoline's almost $4 a gallon, you know, you better Better know what you're, uh, what you're doing and better grow something that's high value, right? Pay for all that. Now this is nice because we're taking a portable system and we're mounting it on a trailer. If you have a creek, a river, and you're wanting to pump out of, this is the cat's meow, so to speak, because, hey, if it's going to flood, you just hook it to your, your four-wheeler, your pickup, or your tractor, disconnect the intake, and you take off. Get it out of harm's way and then back it back down. The nice thing about this system is it has, the, uh, it has a little uh, pitcher pump here to suck the water up, to prime the, the pump, turn it on, and then you've got your filtration, everything right in one place. Nice. And you can buy these already assembled if you'd like, or this, as this gentleman did, he made his own. All right, now, when you, you, you just don't go out and buy a pump. You know, you don't, most people don't uh, buy a car that way, but, uh, or maybe some of them do, I don't know. I guess if you look at uh, some kids maybe, but with a pump, if you don't know what you're doing, you're not going to get the amount of water that you need at the pressure that you need, okay, without knowing the requirements of, of, of that system. So. The thing you need to know, and, you, and when you go buy one of these, or you go to an irrigation a dealer, uh, you talk to a pump guy, he's going to ask you, what's your total dynamic head and your flow rate? In order for you to know the flow rate, you need to know what, the, you set the system up, you know the uh, uh, capacity or the flow, the discharge rate of all your emitters or your emitter lines and your sprinklers, whatever. You add it all up, that's your flow rate. Okay? And all that, some of that information is actually written down. You don't have to just go out and, you know, grab a cup and, or a bucket and turn it on and measure one and then multiply it times. It should be written down at a certain pressure. All these manufacturers have this data. We'll look at some of those uh, a little later on in detail. But the total dynamic head, guys, is the, the level that you're going to be moving that water, the, the total distance, elevation-wise, from the bottom of the well where that intake is, through the pump, up the hill if you need to, to the highest, the highest, riser at the very end of that system. That's your total dynamic head. That's the elevation change. They need to know that. It's not only that plus pressure. Okay, so it's the elevation from the water level to the highest 
discharge, that elevation, plus the pressure that you're going to operate your system. That's your total dynamic head in a nutshell. Okay? If you want to know anything more about that, read the book or go talk to a professional, right? Okay. Oh, and I forgot to mention that minimum five to seven gallons per minute per acre. Your pump is going to have to have the capacity and your water source too, but through your pump to apply at least a minimum of five to seven gallons per minute per acre. And you say, well, I don't have an acre. I've just got a, you know, I've got 20,000 square feet. Well, that's half an acre. You know, you can just do the math. But what it's saying there is, if you, look, if you think about it, most systems on a house at 50, 60 PSI on a hose bib of a house, they will make, some of them will make up to five gallons a minute. Some three, so it depends on the pressure, right? And size of your meter and all that stuff. What it's saying is that if you left, if you left that system on for you know, most of the day, you could irrigate an acre with a hose bib on a house. But you'd have to run it probably 20 hours a day. And I say that because you do the math uh, 20 hours a day. And then most people don't want to stay up that late. Okay, but that's the minimum. All right, okay, now, if you have a windmill, or how about solar power? If you have a, a solar pump, people ask me, can you run an irrigation system, a drip system, on a solar powered pump? Generally not. They don't, it doesn't have the capacity to make the pressure. But what you can do is you can pump it into a higher location and then let gravity deliver the volume of water you need. Now that's not, that's not for most of you, that's not even going to be in the, you know, in the neighborhood. But that's possible. Uh, another thing is some of you might have a, a lake or a pond above your production area. Oh man, you know, use, let gravity do your work. You need 2.3 feet of elevation to generate one pound of pressure. 2.3 feet. So if you can raise that baby, you know, 20 feet, you're generating 15 pounds of pressure, which is plenty for a drip system. You don't even have to do that. You could probably, about 12 feet, 12 to 15 feet would be for a drip system. For micro sprinklers, you're going to need, you know, 20, what, Charles, 20, 25 PSI, something, 30? 15? Low is 15? It's all about, all about elevation, right? Now, one other thing before I move on. Look how he stacked this, guys. Steve Swigert, one of their, uh, our economist at the Nobel Foundation, is working with a, an orphanage in Africa, and they recently did this. They, they, they built a big water tower, gravity flow, but what they didn't do, they built this fancy Fancy steel, you know, angle iron, big rig uh, support for the, for the tank. And what I should have told him, and I just wasn't thinking, if you just have a bunch of timbers, you can build you a strong support as high as you want. You don't have to have any concrete nails. Just stack those things. You've got to have a pad this level. But look what they're doing. He could raise that thing another 10 feet and still be safe. And that's fairly inexpensive compared to doing all the welding and everything. Think about that if you ever have a chance to, to get into a drip system. You want something simple like that. All right.